Here's a sneak peek on what you will be talking about today. And there's my snack. Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. We are podcasting from the Bahamas. No, we're not. I we wish have this we were. <laughs> sweater on if we were. All right. We wish we were. No, he wishes he was. Uh huh. Uh huh. Or just somewhere south of here. I mean, just go <laughs> somewhere so, warm. Yeah, south warm. This is northerner weather. <laughs> All and right. She doesn't even want it, and she's a northerner. <laughs> Not in the north well, yeah. When are you then? I'm an Okie. From Muskogee. Been here 30 years. Alright, so welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. And you are? I don't know who I am. I'm still searching for that identity. A cowboy. Okay. Yeah. RJ the cowboy. Alright, so we have a lot of different stuff today. Would you put the. Come on now. Stop. <laughs> you notice I got them all stuck together so I can just go. Okay. Are you done? Well, no. We got to do this one. Uh-uh. Quit now. Okay. Let's get on with it. glimpses of what's going to happen. You did that earlier. Oh. So you're actually going to use that footage? Why not? Cool. There's going to be a sneak peek, guys. They've already seen it if they've watched this far. Oh. Okay, so. I might have had a moment there. <laughs> um, this week in the barn stalls, anything going on with any of the animals? They're pinned up. It has not been thawing out. We don't want them out on the pond, correct? Right. So pretty much that's everything is just a form of farming that's called dry lotting. Um, and like I said, we just, we've actually lost calves out on the pond when it froze, correct? Mm -hmm. So we don't put them out there. We've built enough pins. <laughs> I have no idea what he's doing. Anyway, so nothing drastic, nothing bad, just cold. We're, we're ready for it. Waters are freezing up a little bit and we're using our bobber bottles. Um, some are working better than others, correct? Mm -hmm. So, it is what it is. It's winter. Yay. Right? Look at it this way. No ticks, no fleas, no chiggers. No right hand from hypothermia. <laughs> no mosquitoes. You need a good hard freeze to kill the bugs. We've had it. It's been frozen for two days. No, we need a good hard freeze. Well, it's we're wishing out in the for daytime. that. Please quit wishing that for that. The high today is like 25. The high Monday is like 18. Please quit wishing for that hard freeze. Mm. Anyway, life Four goes days, on. Not above freezing. Not even the highs. <laughs> That's something that should happen in like Wyoming. Nope. It gets negative in Wyoming. That, that does not happen in Oklahoma. Anyway, moving on. It's supposed to happen yes, it's north. Cold. It's cold. Yeah. We uh, need to relocate. If any of you watch the mending fences, no, we're not from down really south. We no. could locate. We could relocate. No, we're not. We could. Mending fences. Or I could relocate. Shh. Mending fences. I just fixed this cheese and cracker for me. <laughs> we had one little mishap out there. The calves did what to my three-way? Broke it. Broke it. <laughs> yep. Um, we only have one spigot, so I have a three-way adapter that I put on, and then we use pop-ons and pop-offs to put hoses on, open the valves that we need. Um, it works great until the baby kids got over there, and, and we don't know what they did to it, but pretty much it's broken. It broke it. So, it's broken. Um, doesn't stop us from using anything, but, uh, just has to pop on, pop off each individual one you can't use more than one hose at a time so it is what it is um that's a safety pin not a hair pin 
Oh. Mine might not work very good. <laughs> you don't work. Oh. And actually, it's to hold stitches. I'll show you later. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, in the yarn farm. What do we have going on in the yarn farm? We did the nativity. Come on. Right? For Christmas Eve with the animals. Mm -hmm. How'd that go? Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, tell them about the ladies and the hot chocolate. Hello. I know. I was getting a drink. I had to clear my throat. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we got up early. Headed down there, right? No problems. Yes, we got up early. We headed down there. Got everything set up just in the nick of time. It was cold, but not quite like negatives cold. The it was wind was cold. more cold. It wasn't really cold if the wind quit blowing. Right. It was like 40 degrees, 40, 35, 40, something like that. It was nice and chilly. Got all the animals settled in, and we proceeded to. Now we had one issue, one animal issue. Who yeah, Speedy him? wasn't very sweet. She kept headbutting the kid. So we tied her up. Tied just her put up. a halter on her and tied her. Tied her up nice and snuggy tight. And then we proceeded to... People came walking by and petted on them. People came by and petted on them. We gave them cards. Cookies. Cookies. Gave them lots and lots of cookies. Will you stop? That has nothing to do with this. And... Then now we we gave them cookies or they gave the animals cookies. They gave we gave the people cookies to give to the animals. Like see, we would give them this cracker and then they would do this with the cracker. No, they'd feed it to the animals. Oh. <laughs> anyway, had a lot of people up there, right? <laughs> and there was good. <laughs> One guy walks up, mom goes to offer him animal crackers. He has a little boy with him and he goes, no thanks, he's already eaten. <laughs> he thought it was for the little boy. And that was I, funny. It was. Um, and then he realized it was for the... Animals. He's like, oh, oh yeah, we'll, okay. take, we'll take some of those. <laughs> no thanks, he's already eaten today. He's already, he's already had breakfast. Breakfast, yep. He's already, he's already had, had breakfast. It's like, uh, those are the feet of the animals. He goes, oh, okay, we'll take some of those. <laughs> anyway, so we had a good time, right? Yep. And the little ladies of the church, they Maybe were concerned. Hot chocolate. They were concerned, that correct? That I get cold. Yes. And you did get cold, and you let them make you, oh, that's a dog hot food chocolate. now. Hot chocolate. They did. And how good was that hot chocolate? It was pretty good. It was hot, though. Yeah. They right. brought out this little pitcher and it was an insulated pitcher and it said hot across it and it kept it hot like burn your mouth hot for like hour. an hour yeah so it was kind of cool and it was good hot chocolate and they brought us out some a little mini bagel and some little mini muffins they ran out of donuts so it's a crime they did they ran out of donuts it's okay but they had like two, 170 people actually sign in and they know that they missed some. So that's a good thing. There was, you know, almost 200 people there. Um, and then families would only sign in as one. So anybody that signed in like the straw family, that would have counted as two, but it only signed in as one. So they had 170 sign-ins, but that doesn't mean they had 170 people. And it was cute. They had, um, inside they had a heart player and an accordion player playing uh, Christmas carols. <laughs> they had a little mini, okay, stop, dude. They had a section set up that had felt backdrop that looked like old um, Israel or, or Jerusalem or Bethlehem. I don't know what it was supposed to be, but just an old looking city. And they had all the costumes so you could do a selfie and then tag them in it. They had a continental breakfast. Um, and it was all free. And they had a little service, just a little prayer time. Um, and you were allowed to go in and, and be in the sanctuary for as long as you needed. Um, 
just a bunch of stuff. It was an amazing thing. It was, honestly, it was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yes, it just was. So, you need a haircut, boy. Get right on that. Okay, after this. Alright. Okay, so what else is going on in the yarn farm? What else are we working on? Where do we go in, like, We've been working two on weeks. staying warm. Where are we going in two weeks? Winter Wool Fest in Omega. Even further north. <laughs> 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 yes, in two weeks we will be headed to Omega. We will be staying at the wonderful Simmer Hotel up there. We love that place. Um, right? Don't tell them that because then some stalker might come find us. Come find and us. And take us to some winterly cold place. <laughs> well, you think it's south us. to like the Bahamas. Come find I'm us. I'm fine with that. Come, come find us. us. Yep. Come find us. Right? Hey, I found my cracker I dropped. I uh, don't eat that. Why not? Because I haven't mopped and Ooh, you're that's feeding. why. Here, kid. He just looks at it. The dog just slowly gets up and looks at it. He was asleep. <laughs> anyway, so we'll be headed up to Winter Wolf Fest, so we're getting ready for that. Um, I've been doing some spinning. RJ's been getting fleeces ready. Will you stop? They're not supposed to see that yet. Well, they don't know what they are, so they don't know what they're seeing. That is special announcement. Anyway. I'll play with this hairy piece of, uh, Anyway. Um, then, what else are we doing after that? I think that's about it. Oh, I've got a, uh, oh, we have a gardening class on the ninth, mm -hmm. and Julianne from Dirt Patch Heaven will be present. January she will 9th. Be January 9th, she will be giving the a talk on hotbeds. So if you are interested in that in the area, oh, 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 it I need is to a go to that. I want to find class. a way to make my bed hot. It's gardening. So it's gonna let me grow up big and strong too. No. Oh. So anyway, um, if you're in the area, it is a free class. You just need to get a head count. Contact us. You're willing on the table. Let us know. Um, if you're gonna, if you're interested in coming, that way we can kind of get a head count of how many we're gonna have. <laughs> right? Right! Alright. Anything I'm else? Cold. Yeah, he's cold. In the fields, not a I'm darn cold. thing. It is too cold to do anything. Anything at all. <laughs> no gardening. <laughs> and the gardening the class is, is it. Yes, the gardening class is about the only announcement we have in there. So, um, <laughs> alright. In the farmhouse. Now we're ready. I went over to Granny's yesterday. Is that this? It's coming up. Okay. And um, for those who haven't followed us, um, I know that out of the followers that we have, not everyone has followed us from the start. We know that there's a couple like Susan, Heidi, Kathy, they've followed us since the start of it. And they'll know about this piece, but they probably have long forgotten about it. I don't know. I'm pretty sure the minute we bring it up, they'll know. Okay, so back when we first got our very first sheep, um, the one thing that we set our mind to do is to make what we call our heirloom family piece. And it is something that we want that has all of our hands tangible in it. Um, and we wanted to have it have my granny help with it, all that kind of stuff. So when we harvested the first, stop, the first sheep wool. Now this is not the angora goats. These are our sheep. Oh. Yeah. See. Um. It came out like this. Um. It washed, spun. I don't know how to make that focus very well. But. Yeah, focus. It's at got it. its flaws and it's got its things, but we did, and you can see it's got some that's not perfectly spun. It's more fuzzy than anything, right? So you can see it's it's just not consistent, but it's not perfect. But it's perfect for us. All right. <clears throat> so we took the yarn. RJ grew it and everything, and after it was spun up. We took the yarn over to Granny, and what did we do? Come on. I was cold. Okay, what did we do with it? 
She's going to make it into a... Poncho. His arm so, somewhere. She... Right here. There we go. Um, so she started this, and it is a poncho, mm -hmm. and it's got fringe and a band on the front, and then it's got the slits where your arms go through. Are you showing the other? Okay. Yeah, you put your arms through. RJ's arms are too big. It, it's really kind of made for a woman, so you put your yeah. arm through, and you can do it. Now, um, Grandma started knitting it, correct? Yep. And what happened? She died. She passed away. She died. Men are crude. <laughs> My granny passed away. So, who took this project on? Her daughter. My Aunt Kay. And she finished knitting this one. <laughs> um, the problem is, is that she said it took her a little bit longer than normal because she had to match granny's stitches. And anybody who's ever knit knows that everybody has their own tension. So, um, there are little bobbles in it from trading things off, um, having two or more knitters, you know. But for the most part, it it's looks, good. I love it. Um, Granny spilt something on the part that she had knit or something. Oh. And so, here's the thing is I had thought about dyeing it. And you can feel, I think you can just rinse it out. I thought about yeah. dyeing it, but and then, like RJ said, <laughs> it, it has. Well, and you kind of can see, there's, if you look at the stitches, I think you can kind of see the different rows and the different tension and where it changes, but I don't care. I really don't. But Granny's part has a couple of oopsies on them, <laughs> and, and they're just... I'm going to say probably something like cherry pie or uh, cranberry sauce or um, it's just red tinted. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, is if I or dye it. Or cherries in general. Just she cherries. Loved cherries. She loved cherries and that's why I said cherries. Um, oh, I, almost I haven't gotten there yet. Anyway, so I decided I probably wasn't going to dye it. Correct. So yesterday I went and I got to pick it up from my aunt and she looked at me and I asked if it had been soaked or blocked and she looked at me and she says, I use acrylic. I don't know any of that. I said, I'll take care of it. So it hasn't been blocked or um, soaked. So I've got to do that. And then RJ, what else? Now he's dying to tell you. It takes five buttons. And so we got six. We're just that awesome. Well, because we didn't have... Um, what do you guys think of these buttons? So. Oh, you guys like them? That's good. I like them too. Yeah, they just kind of look like wood. They're called coconut. Is that what it is? Coconut? That's probably. But they fit nice and. But and they don't look anything like a coconut. They fit through the holes wonderfully. So. I think it looks good together. That's just me. But, anyway, so I will be putting those on, and we will probably sew the extra one down in here in the bottom so that we always have it. I also will be keeping about 30 yards. I scanned this off. It was still ball wound, okay? Um, I didn't want it to create memories, so uh, I hanked it back up. Not a lovely hank, but I just hanked it so that it wasn't all ball wound up. And um, there's 230 yards there, correct? Yep. And I thought I might make a hat to go with it because yesterday I had on my hat and it almost looked like it went together, huh? So I think I'm going to make a hat to go with it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I will uh, keep some for repairs. Oh, okay. But anyway, this is our heirloom piece. I'm going to make I'm a wig, guys. Super, super proud of it. Okay, here, put this back on. <laughs> All right, then while we were there, my aunt told me that we could have a few things that she had put together for us that... Um, Look at this, guys. They're cards. Yep. What are they from? My grandma had a shop, and it turned into a ceramic shop in the... 70s and 80s but 
It wasn't always a ceramic shop, which is what we didn't know. It was Luann's Crafts. Or Iva Lou's Crafts, I'm sorry. And Iva Louise is my grandmother. That's her name, is Iva Louise. And Iva Lou's Crafts is what she started, I guess. Right? And she got... You want to pull out what she bought? This is the receipt, okay? So, she got an instruction booklet, one skein of brown filler, four skeins of gold filler, two spool brown warp, or one spool of brown warp, two spools of gold warp, a threading hook, a warp beam counter, I don't know what that is, and then she got six shuttles, and she actually got Look, a Look, I'm refund. an airplane, I can fly. She got all of that for $14.35. And these are the big wooden shuttles. There's six of these babies. A dollar. She got all this for less than 15 bucks. Now grab the the warp and the stuff. Yeah, you can just throw that over the back. There you go. I don't want to stick it on those pointy things. No. Get this. Okay, so this is the gold rug filler. You don't need to see all four of them, do you? No. She ordered four of these, right? Five yeah, of these? Four. four. All right. And then she got also got a brown one. And from the instructions, I think these were 75 yards a piece. So she got these. And then, yep, there's that one. And then this is a warp cord. She said she, she got another color, but she no, said brown. her plan says that she's only going to warp it. Yeah, she got this one. But where's the little plan thing we had? Okay. So, with that stuff that she got... This is her hand-drawn a rug, 20 by 34. So she, I'm going to say inches probably. It has an inch mark on there. It has inches? Okay. okay. Oh, 34 inches. Okay, so it's going to be a little runner kind of thing. But in here, she's got it, and she decided she's only going to use the gold warp, right? Mm -hmm. I guess she didn't like the brown or whatever. And then she was going to have two inches of gold, two inches of brown. The center of the body was going to be gold. And then two inches of brown and two inches of gold again. So, I'm thinking I might take this on. Um, nobody has found her loom, though. Correct? That's what but, we did find the booklet to her loom. See, look at these. These are all the different colors. Yeah, she used to have a craft shop. And so, she had a Union Loom number 36. Um, and this is the booklet for it. But nobody can find the actual See, these loom. are all threads. Yeah, that's like your warping threads that were available. Um, and then I already showed them all the puffy ones. Well, the puffy ones, they're filler. They're called rug fillers. And... and <laughs> To anybody who weaves, this is your uh, cord that goes, one's a warp, warp and one's a warped, warped and weft, I don't know. Anyway, this is what you weave with and this is what you warp it with. And so, See, they, they had, had these cards like this. Right yes, if there was, if they had a new color change or whatever, they, they would send for those. all the warps and they sent this one. Yeah. So, here is, you know, her union craft. I don't know. I can't see what I'm showing you. But anyway, um, how to warp it, all that kind of stuff. There's another card. So we know she had a loom. I've never seen her use it. I didn't even know she had one. So, yeah. Put those back um, then I got some other treasures. And they that, sent her a bunch of cards like these too. Yeah, that just had the warps on them. Mm -hmm. uh, they sent one every month in case there was color changes. So we found uh, DuPont Craft Yarn Bulletin. Um, here is, it's called Shuttle. I'm not sure if it's, I'm sure it's a magazine or something because it says September of 1970 and this one's December of 1970. 
So these are her weaving books. And then we also found, um, let's see here. Oh, and then we're laughing because some of the order blanks are still in there. And pretty much they just send you a blank invoice and you write down what you want. And then they sent you a little thing here that you mailed to them. Remember, everything was done by through the mail back then. So uh, there was no email. There was no online orders. There was none of that. So I did find this lovely book right here that she got in, Step-by-Step -step Weaving. The binding didn't even bust. She never even opened it up. I don't know if it was for a customer or for herself. But inside, she got a 25 cent discount, which is a big deal back then. Um, this says $2.50 for this book. And she, here's the invoice, she only paid $2.25. So that meant my grandmother stood to make 25 cents when she sold that book. Because remember, this is Luann's Crafts. She was a retail shop for crafting. Then, let's see here, what else do we have? Um, she had some other different books. Um, Opening the Dorm to Harness Techniques, which is weaving. We have that one. And then she got those. Uh, that was my pile of I'm done. Hold that. All right. Then she had some of these little practical weaving suggestions. So I'm pretty sure there's another um, thing in there. It, they're just really cool. And they're all back from the 1970s. Um, then we had. Sure Not yet. That's for you to do. Um, just a few little invoices that she had. Um, this has the step-by-step -step book for weaving and stuff. Just things that she ordered. And then, and yes, my grandmother kept everything, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Then there's Lily Hand Weaving Yarn Looms and Equipments. And this is like their little catalog. I just think it's cool. Um, but it is. It's Lily's. And then she also had the set and weaving of tartans. And so, and it has we different found it designs. Check. Hang Four. on, I'm not doing that yet. We're still on weaving. For a million dollars, people. But it's got how to do different check patterns in it. Um, and I mean, there's all different kinds, like all different patterns. So, and then we got Handloom Weaving for Amateurs. And this is a book that she apparently had. Um, Used frequently. Yeah, because it's very well loved. Um, anyway, so she did that. And then we've got Weaving for Beginners. And I am going to go through some of these and read them and see. Um, talks about looms and all kinds of stuff. Then we found now. I said, stop. Remember that? Oh, back then, you know, it was more the men that did the business stuff, and my grandfather was very big into helping my grandma, and so he was pretty smart at making stuff. Um, he had his own machine shop, all that kind of stuff, and he quit. Now stop. I just want to check. Okay. Well, stop. All right, so first he inquired about um, the Lily Loom kits, <clears throat> and they were going to be approximately $2.05 to ship. Now, remember, everything was done by a letter because not everybody had phones. Then he also inquired, what else did he inquire about? Oh, the shuttles. Apparently, those shuttles that Grandma did the Union Loom Factory has permanently discontinued the manufacturing of looms and parts. However, we happen we happen to have 20 shuttles left in stock. The price of these each is one dollar postage paid, but the minimum order we can accept is for three. Three dollars postage paid. As the postage costs us so much. So in other words he had to pay for his own postage. 
and then um, they also had three dollars I mean a dollar piece so she ordered six and that invoice is someplace so she ordered six of them um, you may order any number of shuttles from 3 to 20 subject to prior sale um, that means if his letter got there not so quick right and then they had enclosed different ones when he had inquired about um, being a wholesaler for them uh, on different things they had included a price list and that price list was retail now what else did he he also now those were for Lily yarns who was this one to you know, that's his letter to craft me. plant yeah craft pans craft plans see that one says pans that one says craft plans anyway so there is another letter and it came back to him um, with his check craft on it plans. craft plans out of Minneapolis Minnesota all right now show him you got a check Four. Well, it's his, his check. check but explain to me. Dollar twelve. Yep, on December fourth, two thousand what? Nineteen seventy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so keep in mind this is only a year after I was born that she was getting into all this stuff. Um all right, and it says Dear Sirs, enclosed is one dollar for payment for plan number 379 colonial spinning wheel and postage of 12 cents i am also interested in other projects of this kind and would appreciate any information on them yours truly wolford conover and then somebody at the company it says plan number uh 379 two dollars postage is 12 dollars to and it says catalog will be sent with order then they sent his check back with their notes down here. In other words, he owed them another dollar. And they didn't ship it until he sent them a check for $2.12. Now, whether he ever did that, I don't think so. Um, my grandpa had quadruple bypass surgery in the early 70s, so I don't Triple know. Or? Quadruple. Oh. He had numbers and numbers of bypass surgeries so um anyway so those are pretty cool just now you guys see where i get the fiber arts it's been in my blood i'm going i'm thinking i'm going to try and do her rug but i'm probably going to try and do it on my loom instead of hers because we don't have it now get those other little things there were some other treasures that were included in that stuff one is this big um pin for holding it's to hold stitches it's dull I thought they were for knitting, but they might be for warping. I don't know. These thingies, they're sharp. Yes, and I think those were the edges of some kinds of rugs, but I'm not sure. And they're extremely sharp. They are really sharp. So, anyway, we also have this one that is cool. And it's a crochet hook, but it's got this mm. little red thing on top, so I'm not real sure what that is. This one is so small, it's got its own um, case to go over the tip. I don't even know what size that is so I'm gonna have to look them up and these are old ones that she had in with her weaving stuff then she had this looks like a double ended knitting needle maybe it was out of place I don't really know what that's for but then she had this hook right here and it has a little it's on the side Hey, Mom, I'm going to get try my and bite, see. you just take these and you It whack. hooks down, and then it bubbles out and around. So I'm thinking this is for warping at some in some way. Um, but what else did we find in? The one thing I don't have, where is that thing? Hello? Well, that's what you're in flight. They don't hurt. Okay, I get that. Where's, Where's the, the little warping thing? Had the brown handle? Yeah, you took it in the time. cardboard. Anyway, there's an actual warping tool that she ordered. And so I have my grandma's. Um, there we go. Dun, dun, dun. Actual warper. So, I now have her warp tool. I don't know what you call them. I'm not very 
that I just know how to use it. So anyway, so we got all that treasure from my aunt. I also picked up my pressure cooker that was my grandmother's and it's now mine. Um, I got a set of big metal bowls that was my grandmother's that nobody else wanted, so I did. I'm replacing everything so that it'll last the rest of my life. Um, RJ, you want to show them your cow? Yeah. Alright, little back story. My grandmother also did ceramics. She was very good at it. Um, hence why her crafting shop turned later to a ceramic shop and did predominantly ceramics. Um, and that was the part of her life that I knew was when she had turned it into a ceramic shop. Um, when RJ was young, he had found this big cow with me. And when the cow is poured, the two back legs are not on the same mold. You pour them separately and then attach them. So, RJ got this about the same time as he got bidet and he wanted to do it like the day. So I'm going to draw out her pattern on it, paint it black and white, right? Make it look like the day. Now, this is great, but when I say RJ was little, you were what? 10, 12. 10 or 12 years old? 2000, nice, 12. It, you got her in what, 2009? And yeah. so it was shortly there, not not too long I've been 13, after. Then I've been 13. So you've been 13. That's about right. Yeah. Um, so I got it for my birthday. My 13th birthday. Yep. So anyway, um, now it would be your 12th birthday. You were born in 97. Wow. In 2009. Yep, the 12th birthday. Right. Yep. So she's eight years old. Yeah. So. Anyway, um, we were in a little ceramic shop someplace, and they were having a closeout, and I didn't give but, what, a couple dollars for her, and he had to have her. Him, he was going to have Granny make her like um, bidet. That was going to match his bidet. He'd have a bidet forever, right? Yep. So, I take it to my Granny, and I said, okay, I am not great. Will you stop messing with that? If you break it, I'll beat you. Um, I thought it was a fancy old school toothbrush. No. Pull them out. Anyway, um, so I took it to my granny, and her and I struggled. She tried to teach me how to adhere them, but it wasn't me. She was having trouble adhering it. She said she didn't know about the slip. She said if it had been, she tried like four times, and she said that if it had been for anybody else but her grandson, she would have already put it back in the slip pot, which when it's still greenware you can put water with it and make it back into clay and redo it but she didn't have that mole and he really wanted that thing so by golly she was going to do it so her and I tried several different times and I only went over once a week to do um, ceramics with her so over the course of time and there was days that she just didn't feel like messing with it anyway over the course of time when she was hospitalized at one point or whatever we just kind of quit doing ceramics well my aunt Kay cleaning out the stuff she's like this has to be yours I'm on. and uh, I said oh yes that's RJ's bidet and we never could get it and she says well I can attach the legs and I said well beware granny had her issues with it my aunt says oh I, my hands are steadier than hers I can do it I said okay and so one of her goals was to um, get the cow done. And now my granny's been gone how many years now, son? Probably a year. Mm, more than that. Yes, huh? Mm hmm. Two or three years, hasn't she? Harry's been gone a year. Hmm. She died before Bet. Bet's been gone how many years? Four. four. Three or four? Mm hmm. Anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Um, Grandma has been gone a while, and Aunt Kay mm -hmm. is now cussing the cow. Mm -hmm. But she got it on. She said she was. It became a family thing because my great aunt was over there trying to help her do this cow. They get it attached. It had been dry for days. She's like, "Okay, I got this." She got it in a little box, going out to put it in the kill, and she said she hit her elbow on the door going out, and the leg goes flunk. She said, that's not funny. Donna was laughing. 
So she goes back in, gets it fixed again, and um, and the cow is at my grandma's house. It's not at my aunt Kay's, so she doesn't get to work on it every day. It's just when she comes over and has time, she was trying to work on that. So um, one time when Donna was over, Donna's like, I'll get the door. So they made it this big thing. She had Ellis like holding the box and backing up and and she was coming down the stairs and she's like nobody hit it and so yes the cow has become the center of many stories huh mm -hmm. so now i have to finish it and my aunt Kay said if that sucker falls off again invest in some gorilla glue <laughs> i thought it was funny so now it is up to me to um finish the cow i'll paint it and get it done I don't know when because right now I'm getting ready for fiber festival um, the other thing is is that I picked up my two ceramic boots that granny and I had um, cleaned and was um, needed to be fired but my aunt Kay fired those for me and I will get those done too there's another thing but it's a surprise for RJ and he doesn't know about it so I'm not gonna tell okay. so anyway so after all of that Anything else we did? You went practicing, roping, right? Mm -hmm. What else? There was this what, thing. Put on the camera. Oh. Yeah, what thing? I was supposed to remind you to do something. Can't remember what it was, though. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, get dish soap. That yep. was last night. Last night we were to Walmart and got dish soap, shampoo. Anything else? Uh, outdoor slime. <gasps> Not a slide. It's a slideshow. Everything was 50% off. And I said no to paying $35 for it. It was 40 bucks. Uh, 40, yeah, because it's 39 something. At Christmas, I said I wasn't paying that. But then he talked me into this being our one thing. And how much were they? 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. It says buy two or more for spectacular results. We need to go get some more. Like put them on the other side of the house. Mm mm. The dog doesn't like it though. No. Hank spent the entire night in under my foot at the bed and I could not figure out why she was acting that way. Mm -hmm. It wasn't storming, it wasn't whatever. Mm -hmm. But when I got up to go pee about four o'clock this morning, mm -hmm. I figured out you could see them, the lights going. Mm -hmm. She thought it was lightning. So you scared the dog with the slideshow. Mm -hmm. She'll get used to it. <laughs> she got up on the couch and went to sleep. So she was good, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, anything else? Not that. We're this done. Awesome. Okay, it's awesome. Anyway, we're done, right? Bye, folks. See you later. Stop that. Alright. You're going to see us get into a knockdown drag out. Anyway. You want to tussle? He can take me with one arm behind, or one paw behind his back. <laughs> I just took his punchline. Alright, so. I take you blindfold. No, my eyes. With my eyes closed and one hand or one paw tied behind Dr. Sylvester and Tweety. So, anyway, so if just future dates, Wamego is the 12th, or no, it's actually the 13th. We're going up the 12th and we'll be staying in the Simmer Hotel. Um, amazing, amazing. Remember, it's the uh, land of or the home town of the director. I don't know. It has to do with the Wizard of Oz. Everything in there is the Wizard of Oz. They've got Toto's Tacos. They've got 
the house with the witch's legs out from underneath it. They've got a huge museum. Um, it's also home to the Moreno, um, what do you call it, registry? registry? It's right down the road from where we're at. Um, right? So come on out and see us. We'll have some fleece, some yarn, uh, soaps, whatever all, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have two classes. I'll be teaching a notebook class, a fiber notebook class, and a um, Tunisian class. Tunisian class starts at the top of the hour. I'll teach one stitch an hour. I'm calling it a filler class. It's because everybody else wants to go and do the other things. In my class you can fit in and at least learn one stitch. So and if there's nobody there but you that hour, mm -hmm. then you'll learn whatever stitch you want. So, I'm just kind of doing it as a filler class, correct? And Jennifer kind of lets me do whatever I want, huh? <laughs> so, anyway, anything else? You get to see his beautiful face. I'm hoping he'll shave before then. Looks like a monkey. <laughs> oh, ah. Oh, ah, oh, ah. Banana, All right. banana. It's just getting silly now. So come see us then. Don't forget the free gardening class on the 9th. You can come down and see um, Julianne from Dirt Patch Heaven. And us, of course. Nobody really comes to see us. But anyway. <laughs> you probably already turned off the camera now. I'm getting ready to. Because this is running long. So, Alright, we will see you next time. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye. See y'all.